Welcome to Telerik UI for Blazor, the data grid. I'm Ed Charbonneau, Senior Developer Advocate for Progress and Microsoft MVP. Over the next few minutes, we'll be learning how to get started with the Telerik data grid component for Blazor. The Telerik data grid is a premium UI component that is fast and effortless. With the Telerik data grid, you get rich features right out of the box. This includes paging to allow users to navigate large data sets easily. And our context-aware filters will display relevant inputs as well as filter options that match the data type. This includes dates, true-false, and numeric, all without writing an extra line of code. The grid's sorting capabilities are just as impressive and enabled with a single option. Having built-in functionality doesn't mean that you're limited either. The data grid can be completely customized with templates, including data, images, and even other UI components. Let's learn the basics of the Telerik data grid with a simple Hello World example. For this demo, we'll be using the ASP.NET Core Blazor template with the Telerik dependencies already installed. If you need help installing the Telerik UI for Blazor, please refer to our documentation. We'll be working with the fetch data component in this application, but first we'll need to enable the Telerik root component by modifying the main layout of our application. The Telerik root component is necessary for some of the features of the Telerik UI to work properly. We'll start by adding a using statement to bring our components into scope. Next, we'll add a root component to our main layout and place the existing HTML inside of that component. The root component will serve as a reference point for pop-up windows, animations, and other UI behaviors. Now we can add a Telerik grid to our application inside of our fetch data component. The initial version of the fetch data component uses a simple HTML table, which doesn't have advanced features like filtering, sorting, or paging. We can remove all of this code, including the null checks, and replace that with a single grid component. We'll also need to add our using statement to bring our component into scope. We'll start by adding the Telerik grid component to the page. Next, we'll need to specify the data source, which can be of any type that implements the I enumerable interface. For this example, we'll use the forecasts array that's been provided for us. We'll add our columns to the data grid by using the grid column element. Inside, we'll add our individual columns. Here we can specify the field, customize the title name, and enable or disable filtering for individual columns. We can use the name of operator to specify the property names that we wish to bind to our columns. By using a strong type, we can avoid issues later if we rename one of the properties in our object. Once our column definition is complete, we can close the tag and make multiple copies. Now it's just a matter of changing some of the property names and specifying a few custom titles for our columns. By default, the column's title will be inherited from the column's bound property name. We can override this behavior by setting the title property of the column explicitly using any string we'd like. For this example, we'll abbreviate the temperature in Celsius and temperature in Fahrenheit. This is the basic information needed by the Telerik grid. Now we can run the application and see what the grid looks like. As you can see, the data grid loaded successfully, but there aren't any premium features like sorting, filtering, or paging enabled yet. Let's go back to Visual Studio and add those features. Enabling sorting, filtering, and paging on the data grid is surprisingly simple because we just need to enable a couple properties. We'll set sortable to true, pageable to true, and select our filtering options. With the grid values set, Let's jump back into the application and see what the changes look like. Now our data grid has filtering options displayed right in the title of each column. Users can simply click on the button and initiate a filter. The grid's filter menus correspond to the column's data type. Here, we'll select a date off the calendar to filter our data in the date column. The temperature column displays a numeric input, so we can set a range here as well. These capabilities are only the beginning. The Telerik data grid supports many other features that you can see at demos.telerik.com. This includes pop-up editing, templating, and other features like virtual scrolling. 
If you'd like to try the data grid for yourself, visit Telerik.com for a 30-day free trial of all our Telerik UI components and tools.